friends, thanks for stopping by. I hope you're all having a great day. Today's video is going to be all about me sharing my tips to help you stop breaking your own hair. Many people complain my hair just won't grow, it keeps breaking, and sometimes we're creating that mess right in the bathroom when we're styling our hair. So I hope that some of these tips will get you back on the path to having the best hair of your life. This way, if you choose to wear it short, medium, or long, it's the best hair you can possibly have. All right, my friend, we're not talking about the amount of hair we have because we all know genetically I have been blessed with a ton of hair. But what happens to this hair once it comes out of my head is my responsibility. So I have to be responsible and, like I say, I have to take part. I have to participate in the game, my friends, and this is the game of healthier hair. Before All right. we move on to tip number one, let's talk about this fabulous silk blouse that I am wearing. It is spectacular. The color is French blue. I know some of you have been out there looking saying, oh my God, that blouse is beautiful. I have to have it. Well, this one is from Lily Silk, and the first part of this video is in collaboration with Lily Silk. They have many, many items on their website. They have bedding, they have pajamas, they have panties, they have bras, they have blouses, they have tank tops. They actually sent me a couple of pieces. They also sent this beautiful tank top in this rose. It is just beautiful. Again, this is the charmeuse, which means that it has a beautiful sheen to the silk. The weight of this is fabulous, not too heavy, not too thin. As a menopausal woman, this is important. This blouse allows you to breathe. It's not suffocating. Some articles of clothing after menopause can be suffocating. This is very, very comfortable to wear. I absolutely love silk blouses. They look feminine. They can be casual, smart casual, or they can be dressed up. They can be worn with jeans. They can be worn with a pencil skirt. Just really, you can tuck them in or leave them out. This one has beautiful mother of pearl buttons and it does have the stamp of lily silk on it. It has the flat placket, which means the buttons are covered, so it keeps it on the elegant side for me. I just love silk blouses. I think they're fabulous. The camisole, as you can see, it ties in well with a jacket and jeans. You can also wear this with a dressier outfit. You could put this under a beautiful Christmas outfit. They have several different colors. I think this is a beautiful color. I'm actually gonna look on site and see if they have a beautiful green. For some reason, green is really appealing to me this season. I don't know why, but I'm gonna look to see if they have it. So I will link the Lily Silk website below and all of the items that I talk about. And there is a code TAMMY12 for 12% off your order. Remember, they have many, many things. They have Mulberry Silk, which is the finest silk that you can buy. They have their pillowcases are 100% mulberry silk. Right, so here we are in my bedroom for tip number one. Sleep with a silk pillowcase. And this is from Lily Silk. It is 100% mulberry silk, the best silk you can buy. And it will make a world of difference for your hair. It also has anti-aging benefits for the skin. And a lot of people think that silk is going to absorb the moisture from your skincare products or your hair. It will not. Actually, silk is a protein, so silk does help to retain moisture in your hair and your skin. But we are here to talk about hair breakage today. So I thought I would just bring you into my bedroom and show you how nice it is to sleep on a silk pillowcase, but I wanted to demonstrate what happens to the hair. When I lay on my silk pillowcase, whether my hair is damp, whether my hair is dry, and I sleep with my hair just like this, my friends, I don't put it up or anything. When you move your head around, it just kind of glides. No matter which way you turn, your hair just glides with the pillow. It doesn't knot up. It's not going to snap. And remember, silk is a protein, so it's helping your hair to retain its moisture. And yes, my friends, I put oil on my hair and I go right to sleep on my silk pillowcase and I don't have a problem with it staining. Again, this is 100% mulberry silk from Lily Silk. Make that change to a silk 
pillowcase. It really will make all the difference for your hair and it does have the added bonus of being anti-aging for your skin. I also do not wake up, and I know many of you are going to be able to relate to this, I don't wake up with wrinkles and creases in my face anymore ever since I started sleeping on a silk pillowcase. So make the transition to a silk pillowcase and you will notice less friction which is causing less tangling and you will also notice that your skin is not wrinkling as much. That's another bonus. For some, it'll probably be the biggest bonus, but we're talking about hair today. So silk pillowcase. Next, Next thing I'm going to talk about, for those of us who like to wear our hair pulled back, change the position of the way you wear your hair, especially if you are someone that goes to sleep at night and you pull your hair back to go to bed. That stress, especially where you put that rubber band or that tie that you're using is going to cause stress on the strands and it's going to break the hair just by sleeping there, just by being there. So again, when you pull your hair back, you also add stress onto the roots. So you want to make sure that you're changing that position so it's not the same strands that are being stressed by pulling it back. So change the position. One night here, next night maybe in the back. If you have to do it on the side, do it on the side. Or try to get used to sleeping with your hair down. I do not sleep with my hair up. I sleep with it on a silk pillowcase. I don't have the problem of all the breakage. I used to sleep with my hair pulled up. So my next suggestion, if you are someone who really has to tie your hair up, think about silk scrunchies. These are from Lily Silk. Again, 100% silk. They do come in different sizes if you don't like the really big ones. They come in a medium, then they come one size smaller, and then they come in a tighter one. So I'm going to go ahead. They have a nice grip to them, but because of the silk, there'll be no damage to the hair. So let's go ahead and just pull this up. And I'm just going to do my regular little bun that I do and pull it up and there you have it. Not only is your hair more protected with the silk, but also this looks prettier. So consider the silk scrunchies from Lily Silk. My next tip, which I have talked about in many of my videos, and I'm just going to keep repeating myself, stop brushing your wet hair. So many people, they get out of the shower, they do this with their towel and dry their hair as best they can, and then they go and grab their brush, this is just a paddle brush, and they start from the root down and they just yank on that hair. Hair is very fragile when it's wet, it stretches, and the elasticity, you just keep pulling on it, pulling on it, pulling on it, eventually it's gonna give way, just like the skin we sag, your hair is gonna snap. The way we should be brushing our hair when it's wet is from the bottom up, doesn't matter if you wanna use this kind of brush. Make sure if you're using a brush like this that has these little white things, once these start to fall off, get rid of the brush because that is gonna snag and pull on the hair. So make sure your brushes are in good shape but start from the ends and work your way up. I highly suggest a brush that is made for wet hair if you are a brush person. This one is made from Olivia Garden. It's the detangler brush, wet makes the brushes. Again, you want to go from the bottom up. And if you, you don't wanna yank, you wanna be gentle on it and just keep working, working, working. And then once you get to the top, you'll have no more tangles. So you're being much more gentle and you're not stretching that hair to maximum and snapping it, which is causing breakage. My suggestion, and this is what I do, in the shower I have a wide tooth comb. Once you put your conditioner on, and conditioner is a must, at least on the ends. If conditioner makes your hair too oily on the roots, don't put it on the roots, just put it on the ends because that will help to moisturize your hair. If your hair isn't getting moisture and you're just shampooing and jumping out, you've when got you get out of the shower and you start to comb through, you're starting to snap your hair again. All right, my friends? So conditioner is a must, at least on the ends. And then take your wide tooth comb when the conditioner's on and comb from the bottom up and detangle in the shower already. Now, I am someone that when I get out of the shower, I tip my head upside down and I put it in a turby towel. And I allow the moisture to come out of my hair that way versus rubbing. Again, when you rub, 
that's friction on fragile hair and your hair could almost already be fragile from other things that you do to, do to it that we're going to talk about but that friction is causing frizz for one thing and it may break your hair so stop with the wet hair abuse all right my friends my okay. next tip is stop using your heating tool at the highest temperature you are frying your hair you are weakening the hair once your hair is weak it's going to break so stop using the hot tools at their highest and if you can go without using them every single day or every other day try try to use them as little as possible I know a lot of people are in love with the flat iron but that flat iron is just destroying people's hair my friends and if you are going to continue to use your heating tools my next tip is to use a heat protector now I have many heat protectors I'm going to show you a couple of products this one here is from Amica and it is called the wizard now I'm going to warn you that Amica smell to me is so offensive and creates a headache almost gives me breathing problems but I hear so much about it that I wanted to go ahead and give it a try even at wholesale this is a pricey line so I think this line is very expensive but I did want to try this and I sprayed it only on the driest of my hair I don't really need it on the underneath hair but I do need it on the top layer because the drier hair is the more brittle it's going to seem the more it's going to tangle it's just a nasty little cycle my friends but this does work really well and it has a heat protectant in it so you don't need to buy a detangler and a heat protector and getting back to uh, when you get out of the shower get in the habit of using a detangler if you are somebody who has really dry hair and no matter what you do you still have knots and tangles detangle a good one keep trying until you find the one that works best for you I don't like them all this one I did like but the set smell to me is horrendous and I know people love this it's like wearing perfume too much perfume to me so but it is it does work my friends and it has the heating in for for you already the next one is from Phyto or Phyto depending on what part of the world you're from this is a repairing thermal protectant spray now this one is nice and I almost think this would be better for coarser hair or curlier hair because this one if I overuse it will make my hair feel a little dirty and weigh it down but it does work nicely it does not detangle as much as this one but this one on it if you look it says for weakened damaged hair protectant spray thermal protectant spray so it doesn't really say anything about detangling so don't expect detangling from it it works very nice my next one that I will mention is from Shu Yurmura, Yurmia, I don't know how to say it. It is their blow dry beautifier. It is a thermal BB serum. I do like this one. Again, I don't put this on all of my hair. I pretty much focus it on the top layer that for me is my most stressed hair. But of course, if you're someone that puts highlights all over your head or you really bleach out your hair, you want to use a thermal protectant more than anyone. Okay? So, get yourself a good detangler and thermal protectant especially if you are going to continue to use your heating tools at a higher temperature all right okay the next tip is not something that you're actually doing to yourself but your stylist may be doing it and if you are unaware to maybe watch when they're doing things you don't even know they're doing it but if you find that when you go and you get your hair highlighted you seem to have more breakage than usual perhaps your stylist is overlapping and that means they are all they are applying more bleach to your old highlights you don't need more bleach on them they should be only high highlighting the new growth so pay attention to how much overlapping your stylist is doing because that is going to weaken your strands some stylists are much better than others we all know that and I have been to stylists who have overlapped and I quickly changed from that stylist because it will break your hair so pay attention when they're putting those foils in are they going over already blonde hair if they are 
You might need to reconsider a new stylist. All right, so just really pay attention to your stylist and if they're overlapping. And maybe, just maybe, take a break, break from highlighting. If you'll notice, my roots are getting darker and darker with COVID because I'm not having any highlights put in. So this hair is going to be healthier than the highlighted hair. Once you highlight, you damage hair. So if you can go a little bit longer in between your highlights, you will be serving a purpose to your hair. It'll get healthier, it will, okay? My next tip involves the products you use on your hair. Try to go sulfate free because sulfates are very drying. I don't use any shampoos that have sulfate. I try to get hair products that have less alcohol because alcohol can also be drying. Now there are different types of alcohol. So if it has denatured alcohol in it, that's gonna dry a little bit more than a moisturizing uh, alcohol. Same goes for skincare and makeup. But if you can, uh, get yourself used to using sulfate-free shampoos, you will be better off in the long run. It will also prolong your color because if you're using sulfates on colored hair, it's going to give you the fade out much quicker. All color is going to fade, and especially redheads. All color is going to fade eventually, but it doesn't have to fade so quickly. So stop using sulfate shampoos and your hair will not be as dry. If you have really dry hair, you really shouldn't be using sulfates. And the drugstore has really good sulfate free. I say buy the best products your wallet allows you to. My next tip is going to involve you watching my video, the best hair of your life. In this video, I give you so many good tips on how I keep my hair long and healthy, especially during COVID. I've not had a haircut since October. And I am out in the sun every day and I have managed to keep my hair looking very, very healthy just by doing the things I share with you in this video. So I will link that video below. It involves pre-treating your hair with oils and why I explain everything in this video, okay? So go watch that video. It will be linked below for you. Very important if you want healthy hair. The next tip I'm going to suggest that you get in the habit of masking your hair. Masking will add moisture back into the hair. Buy good hair mask. And by good hair mask, I don't necessarily mean expensive hair mask. I have talked about so many different hair masks on my channel. Again, you might want to watch my hair videos. I'll link all my hair videos so you know what to watch and what to look for. Masking is very important. It's something that I do every single week. I do once a week, I do deep conditioning and in the shower, depending on how my hair is looking or feeling, I may do a quick two to three minute mask. But you don't have to use really expensive masks to get the job done. This here is a $2.99 mask. I think it's from Hair Food. This is their nourishing sulfate free, paraben free, dye free hair mask. These are excellent. This is the moisture. I also have the smoothing. Very, very good hair mask. A lot comes in this package. If you have long hair like me, you may need two packages or one and a half. If you have short hair, this pack is gonna serve you probably two treatments. So get in the habit of masking. Again, they don't have to be expensive, but I do have some masks here that I absolutely love. The Colleen Rothschild has become an absolute favorite hair mask of mine. This is a spectacular hair mask for very dry hair. It can also be serve as your conditioner if you use her shampoo. Excellent, excellent hair mask. It does have a scent to it if you're scent sensitive. The next one is by Gisu. This is a very expensive hair mask, but it is a beautiful hair mask. This mask can, should not be overused. If it's overused, you're not gonna like the results. Maybe you will, I did the not. The next hair mask that I recently purchased and I really like is by Fito, Fito, depends on where you're from. Uh, this is called their Exceptional Mask. It's an ultra, it's for ultra damaged, brittle and dry hair. So if you are someone that highlights your hair and you have that top layer that you see a lot of breakage, you may want to look into a mask like this. This mask has nothing fancy about it. These are specific formulas to treat the hair. 
and they can be purchased at a top couple of different uh, places. Again, I will list and link everything below for you. And the last one I'm going to mention for treating the hair, well, I actually have two. One was a suggestion from one of you. Uh, Olaplex has now come out with the number zero. This primes, repairs, strengthens, and protects all hair types. I did try this. This one works with the number three formula. So this one here, you put on dry hair, and I used quite a bit of it, half a bottle on my hair, but you go ahead and you just squirt this on your hair and then you leave it on for 10 minutes, I think it is. Yeah, you leave it on for 10 minutes on your dry hair. You have to saturate your hair with it. So be prepared to use the whole bottle if you have long hair. I thought I was going to. I have less than half this bottle left and I've only done one treatment. After you leave it on your dry hair for 10 minutes, you don't rinse it off and you come in with the number three and then you leave it on for 10, 20 minutes. I left it on forever, how long? I just left it on. And I will say that this is a really nice deep treatment if you have really, really damaged hair. And the last one I'm going to share with you actually was a suggestion from one of you and it is very expensive it's called the elasticizer i did use it once it's very very nice what this does is it helps the elasticity of your hair and if your hair has more elasticity to it the less likely it is to break and this is a treatment that you put on wet hair before you wash it and you leave it on the longer you leave it on the better if you want to leave it on overnight you can leave it on overnight and right, my friends so there you have it my tips to help you stop breaking your own hair I would like to thank Lily Silk again for one offering us a code to get 12% off the beautiful blouses the camisole or the pillowcase. The pillowcase is going to be a savior to your hair, my friends, and it also has skincare benefits. So again, thank you to Lily Silk for collaborating with me on this video, sending me this beautiful silk blouse, pillowcase, and the camisole, along with these beautiful little scrunchies. I will have everything listed and linked below for you, my friends. If you haven't already subscribed, I would love to have you as an ageless beauty, so hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified through email of every video I put up. Until the next time, my friends, go out in the world and be happy, healthy, beautiful, and most of all, my friends, lovable. I love you all. Bisous.